Content warning, mass shootings, kinda. So, I feel I've made my position on Christmas reviews pretty clear. Well, yes, there are a lot of interesting bad Christmas movies. Every critic talks about a Christmas movie every year. Sometimes more than one, which leaves very few interesting bad Christmas movies left to talk about. So when you find one, you better fucking jump on it. This is a film from 2019. And I'm not even the first person to talk about it. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, A Karate Christmas Miracle. What? I'm running low on weird sodas. It's, it's holiday cheer. It's delicious. And well advised for watching this movie. A Karate Christmas Miracle is... God, how do I introduce this movie? It's exactly the shit you expect of me. Zero budget, insanely obscure, no one involved ever did anything, except... Good ol' Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts is such an odd actor because he's in fucking everything. The man has over 400 credits. So he appears in stuff like The Dark Knight, but also in cheap shit like A Talking Cat. And in basically all of them, he shows up for like one day of filming and that's all you get out of him. Frankly, it's astounding I've never highlighted one of his movies before now. Everyone else involved, not really worth talking about, so let's look at this Blu-ray. Just looking at this box, it's completely suspect. The way it just says Blu-ray disc in plain font rather than having the Blu-ray logo on every other Blu-ray I own. And the fact that it doesn't play in either of the Blu-ray players I've tried to put it in confirms this suspicion. This is a rewritable disc I could buy at Walmart. Luckily, my Blu-ray drive was able to rip it, but if you want to watch this movie, it's free on Tubi and you can buy it digitally on Prime. The Blu-ray does not work. Also, they cut off half the title on the back. Not sure how they did that. But you know what? That's exactly the shit I love here. This is a karate Christmas miracle. Honestly, these opening shots look pretty good, which probably means they're stock footage. I mean, offhand, I can't prove it's stock footage, but it looks like stock footage, right? We meet Jesse and his mom, Abby. Jesse is working on naming all the countries and all the presidents. Oh, hey, I know some songs on those topics. Why is Jesse doing these things? Well, one year ago, his dad was involved in a mass shooting. I guess his body was never found or something, because while Abby seems certain he's dead, Jesse still wants him to come back. And last year, Dad said if he finished a list of 12 things, he could have whatever he wanted for Christmas. So if he does all 12, he gets his dad back. That is the plot of a movie. I mean, it's not that out there, like... Kid has a list of things to do to get whatever he wants, and he wants a dead relative back. I could almost see it working. The mass shooting bit makes it a bit weird. And probably get this video demonetized. Thanks a lot, kids movie. But where this film fucks up is execution. Like, having Jesse wear his karate outfit the whole movie. Although this looks a lot more like wrestling than karate. And Jesse decides he's gonna teach himself karate from now on because earning a black belt is on his Christmas to-do list. Oh god, where do I even start with this? Uh, Jesse's a gold belt, which is one level above the beginner level. Um, he had a whole year to work on this and he never got above gold? Uh, secondarily, I think Jesse's dad was trolling him, like... Yes, yeah, son, you get a black belt before Christmas, you can have anything you want. But, you know, like, 
he used a white belt, there was no way he was getting a black belt before Christmas. And there really shouldn't be a way for him to get a black belt before this Christmas without cheating. Which he does. Anyways, sudden onset flashback. Nothing provokes this. It's not even a flashback any of the characters in the movie are having. For some reason, Eric Roberts is all glowy. I think this is a video being projected onto a screen, but it'd be the image glowing, not the things in the image. And this is the curse of talking about movies like this. I've mentioned it before, but so many of these movies just make absolutely no sense. So when I have to describe what happens in them, I tend to editorialize a bit, and I worry I'm making the film sound more coherent than it actually is. So, from what I can gather, Eric Roberts orchestrated the mass shooting by locking people in a theater, showing them these clips he made in said theater, and then shooting all of them. You might notice this sounds less like a mass shooter who are usually emotional, aimless, and targeting a specific type of person rather than anyone in specific, and more like a dramatic, calculating movie villain. I mean, the guy wore a fucking clown mask. We are six minutes into this movie. And I guess that whole scene was Jesse having a nightmare about a real event he wasn't present for with precise details he couldn't have known. Might explain the weird after effects, though. Also, can we talk about how this is not a child's bedroom? That bed is entirely too big for him, and he has no room for anything else. It looks like my fucking bedroom, but I own an entire apartment to keep my shit in. Jesse, why did you dream of that? Like, he has any control over that type of thing. We get a look at that to-do list, and while there's obvious stuff like naming presidents and doing chores, there's also stuff like bake chocolate chip cookies, name every NFL team, and name 25 people from the Bible. Then we meet this poor, deranged woman ranting about absolute nonsense. Well, I can't call you critters, right? That ain't one of them forbidden words or something. <laughs> nah, critters is okay, but how about I call you my elves? Oh, no, how about my reindeer? Yeah, you're all little reindeer, but without the horns, because I don't like horns. They kind of remind me of that devil guy, and he ain't very Christmassy, is he? Oh, I mean, uh, teaching law. She's a law professor. I'm not kidding, she goes on and on, and it makes no sense. You know, celebrating with the boss, that little chubby guy, you know, <laughs> little in the red suit with the beard, Santa. And Santa has had a whole lot of beer to drink tonight. In fact, he's just plum wasted. And it somehow gets weirder. Reckless and dangerous. The answer is none of the above. Do I know you, young man? Yeah, my dad said I needed a law degree before he'd come back to life. You think the weirdness train is stopping here? Nah. In the next scene, Abby is convinced that the law professor, who literally doesn't have a name, is a psychic. Also, I am absolutely certain her office is the office in Abby's house with the furniture rearranged. And Abby keeps pushing her, even though she's clearly uncomfortable about using her psychic powers. Because I'm having nightmares? Your son is having nightmares too, did you know that? So, Jesse had those dreams... because he's psychic? I trust I don't have to yell what the fuck. I, I, I think you can do that on your own for me. Thank you. Also, Jesse is just giving himself higher belts. He gave himself green belt and then tells his mom that he's made it to blue belt. Jesse has another nightmare where I think Eric Roberts implies he's psychically haunting this kid. We will haunt these victims. We'll haunt their minds, their dreams, even the very land they walk on. Why didn't you tell me dad was at the theater trying to make a constitutional argument about guns? Of course he fucking was. If he even was, that's the only time it gets mentioned, and later it's implied he was at a birthday party, so... What the fuck? Applesauce is amazing these days. It's the new Jell-O. 
Is Jello especially popular? And more importantly, can you add vodka to applesauce? I think not. But she gets a call from her dead husband. Who's this? Where did you find his phone? Fuck it, I guess the answers to those questions are important. Psychic Professor is talking about the Grinch or something and has a flashback looking at the knife. I was even gonna make a joke about her ranting to no one, but the movie went ahead and did that for me. In pursuit of her late husband's phone, Abby gets coerced into helping with a Christmas dinner for the needy. Are you Jay? Do I look like Jay? I'm sorry, I don't know what Jay looks like. Do I look like AJ? Oh, hmm? uh, sure, why not? Jay's a pretty common name. Jay's a letter of the alphabet, and I don't think I look like a letter. It's also a bird, as in blue Jay, and I'm not blue. Do I look blue to you? Huh? Are you trying to call me blue? How would you like it if I called you W? Huh? Bro, fuck off. And Jay, that blue bird guy you're looking for, he sold his spot to me over a year ago. His mind's now. Oh. I'm sorry. He's set to meet him here. <laughs> Yo, hold up, babe. Hold up. Hold up. I was just kidding around. I was just joking. Jay! Yo, Jay! Bro! Fuck off! They found Bob's phone under one of the tables because apparently he helped with these dinners and Abby just didn't know. But unfortunately, they don't know how long the phone has been there. And then Jesse begins explaining the meaning of different belts in a Christmas movie about mass shooting and psychics. A white belt is a beginner searching for knowledge in the beginning of life cycle. The yellow belt symbolizes the first beams of sunlight which shine upon the seed, giving it new strength with the beginning of new life. Apparently Bob was teaching knife self-defense for ladies. I hope you did a better job than Daddy Derek. This happens. Live. You attractive geniuses and live large. Hello out there in crazy land. I'm Graham Palace, owner of the Palace Theater chain and of course this classic theater. As my lovely daughter told you, this is the crown jewel in our empire and the place we end up spending most of our time. What she didn't tell you is that today is her birthday. Dun -dun -dun! Everyone say, Happy birthday. No, no, no. That was terrible. One more time. All together. Happy birthday. Your guess is as good as mine. Jesse the interpreter to the rescue. She was very close with her father, too. How do you know that? Because I saw him speaking to her. He gave her that theater as a present on the night of the shooting, on the night Dad went missing. On Christmas Day last year. Yes, and it was her birthday. She was the only person to survive the shooting. It was a miracle on her birthday. Kind of stupid to have a major part of your plot only told in nonsense, disconnected dream sequences, because I cannot figure out what the timeline of events here is. Also, guess what his daughter's name is? The woman who owned the theater. Aurora Palace? The woman who owned the theater where there was a mass shooting committed by a man dressed as a clown is named fucking Aurora? You don't think that's maybe in kind of poor taste? What the fuck type of Christmas movie is this? So Abby and the psychic with no name go get drunk. It's just as good as you expect. Ouch! She's batting 1,000, and the crowd goes wild. <sighs> mm. So Jesse calls the former theater owner. Not sure how he got his number, but, you know, it's implied he is calling him in heaven. That never gets confirmed, unfortunately, but it is heavily implied. What does that mean, Elizabeth? You just called me by my first name. She has a first name? It's 
50 minutes into the movie before we find out what her first name is, and she is not credited as anything on IMDb, so I just sort of assumed. Don't you see that you're, you're losing your own son? Is she, though? There's, like, a scene earlier where she didn't want to paint a birdhouse with Jesse, but other than that, their relationship seems fine. She cooks dinner for him, they eat together. Uh, he sure doesn't seem to mind that she's absent most of the time. Hell, he's on track to give himself a black belt. I think Jesse's doing great. Anyways, they go to look for Bob, who was apparently on the school's campus. Apparently he built the gazebo or something? And then Abby just paints the birdhouse by herself. Like, if you're not gonna do it with your son anyways, you might as well be doing work. How many other people lost their husband last Christmas? It's just that usually, you're the most work is first person I know. Bro, absolutely, positively, fuck off. And the fucking crazy lady is trying to lecture to the North Sentinelese people, one of the few tribes who've remained untouched by the modern world, who strongly resist outside influence. But it's clearly just like a video she's watching. They don't have computers, and even if they did, they don't speak English. This pretty much confirms to me that she is neither psychic nor a professor. She has just absolutely lost it. She has another flashback to that shooting and gives a pretty accurate summary. I, I don't know. It's just like a big old jumbled mess. I don't know if it's from the past or the present or the future or maybe some other place. Um, and there's more wild goose chase, but mostly it's to a bar so crazy lady can get drunk. Finally, she comes to one conclusion. Bob is dead, and he just wanted Abby to know all the good things he did while he was alive. Bragging from beyond the grave. So as soon as Jesse breaks one board, he'll give himself Black Belt. And then his dad comes back to life. What the fuck? How? He's just, he's just alive. He just, he just comes back to life, just like Jesse said he would. And that's, that's the end of the movie. There's no wrap-up. There's a line that's like, oh, it's a miracle. But, like, for real, how is he alive? That's a karate Christmas miracle. A miracle indeed. Holy fucking shitballs, what the fuck is this mess? It's not a poorly made film. I mean, the acting's not the best, and they were clearly on a budget, but... I think they did all right, given what they had to work with. But Jesus fucking Kentucky Fried Christ, this story is nonsense. It's horrendously edited to the point of incomprehensibility, and what I can figure out raises even more questions. It's beautiful. It is destined to become a Christmas bad movie classic. It's also got weirdly dark elements for what seems to be... A kids movie, right? Like, if this isn't for kids, who is it for? I don't know, but you probably shouldn't show it to your kids. Unless your kids are a 25-year-old woman. Yo, kid, what's up? Hey, what's up? Why are you, uh, yeah. practicing karate? Ha! Santa died in a school shooting. Excuse me? Santa died, and he, but before he did, he gave me a to-do list. And if I complete everything on it, he'll come back to life. Uh-huh. And Taekwondo was on the list. Yep, got her in my black belt. Yeah! There, her in my black belt. You, uh, sure about that? Well, who decides who gets a black belt? Other black belts, right? Well, I'm a black belt, and I give myself a black belt. Uh... Yeah, that adds up. Just gotta check that out. Now all I have left is to deliver toys to all the good children around the world. See you around. Psst. Is she gone? It's Santa, what the fuck? I thought you were dead. Nah, I just wanted her to do my work for me. <laughs> I knew it, you lazy fuck. Fuck, uh, kid? 
Calm down, it's okay. Fuck you, I have my black belt! Mm. Mm. Uh, if you like this one, more Christmas stuff. Uh, happy holidays? Jesus! Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> and that red bulb in your nose, it just explodes. Because you had a tequila shot that just didn't agree with you. <sighs> what the fuck? This movie wasn't even about me sucking this year.